This is a company that's actually headquartered in Sweden, and about two years ago, the company has begun to put together an operation in the United States. And what I'd like to talk to you about today is a little bit about the background of the company, the parent company, because there's a lot happening over in Sweden. Seems like every quarter there's some new announcements going on. Um, but also, I'll give you a snapshot of what we're doing in the U.S. to support the products that we have for the treatment of rare diseases. Which one is the, uh, on the, right. the right? Okay, there you go. There's our disclaimer. Um, so I don't know how familiar any of you might be with Swedish Orphan, except for one of my colleagues is here. She's the head of clinical development, is with us today and for the conference. Uh, but this is actually a merger of two companies, both based in Stockholm, Swedish Orphan, which has been in rare diseases and orphan drugs for well over 20 years, and Biovitrum, which was a spin-out of Kabi, which is a, was a major company in Sweden producing products for the treatment of hemophilia. So these, pro these two companies actually came together uh, early in 2010. And we are now very much a totally vertically integrated company, which is extremely important for the delivery of these medicines to all of our patients. We have everything from very early stage research all the way through commercialization, and we're now in many countries, which I'll show you in just a moment. And we have a very long heritage uh, and a current focus on protein drugs. So I think that's a particular specialty of Swedish Orphan Biovitrum and, of course, is very important in the space that all of you have been talking about today. Um, we're about 500 employees, just to give you a sense of the size of the organization. 500 employees in total. Again, we're main office is in Stockholm. We are a publicly held company <coughs> and we're listed on the Stockholm Exchange. And last year, our revenues were around $300 million. So with the merger of the two companies, we now have a very strong international commercial presence. We actually have subsidiaries, wholly owned subsidiaries, in virtually every country in Europe. We have distribution partners in many other places in the world. And as I mentioned earlier, we've been establishing a footprint in the United States and in Canada over the last two years. <coughs> Geographically, you can see that the majority of our product sales are coming from Europe. About a quarter of our sales are based in the Nordic countries. Again, this is a Swedish-based company, so we have very strong presence in the Nordics, as well as about 25% of the revenues come out of the United States. Our growth, of course, is really focused on three things. We have to do an extraordinary job of expanding the use of the products that we have. I'm sure all of you have been talking today just about the challenges of finding the patients who need the products that we're selling and we're marketing, and the screening programs that are becoming more and more important to identify these patients. So that's something that I think we spend most of our time focusing on. We also want to expand our commercial portfolio. We've done a lot of work making the company bigger and putting the infrastructure in place <coughs> to be able to dedicate to these types of products, and now we want to expand that through acquisitions. And finally, we also have an emerging development pipeline. I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Our most significant revenues comes from four or five products. As I mentioned earlier, the largest portfolio for us are the hemophilia products. And you may or may not know, uh, I know there's some representatives from Pfizer here, but we actually manufacture the hemophilia products for the treatment of both hemophilia A and B for Pfizer. So that's been a staple of the organization for many, many years. Uh, we have also a product called Kineret, which is for rheumatoid arthritis, Orphidin, and Kepavance are our main products. In the U.S., we only market and sell Kepavance and Kineret. So I'll be talking the rest of the time just really a little bit about those two products, and then I'll give you a sense of what we're doing in the United States from an organizational perspective. Kineret is indicated for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, and it's an IL-1 antagonist. We're actually the only IL-1 that's approved for this particular indication. We're really used very much as a second, third, even sometimes fourth or fifth line drug, because right after Kineret was launched by Amgen many, many years ago, the TNF inhibitors came out, and there was a lot much, much more commercial uh, support put for, on those products. But nevertheless, it is a very effective treatment for this particular indication. 
we have a global license from Amgen, some nice patent protection as well. But the growth for this product is really in orphan diseases. Uh, the product is used in juvenile idiopathic arthritis, for which we actually were just recommended by the new ACR guidelines for treatment of this particular orphan disease. It's also used in CAFs, Stills disease, and we're seeing a lot more use now in refractory gout. CapAvance is a product that is used uh, actually as a supportive treatment in patients who are receiving stem cell therapy. And um, I apologize for the picture, but it's really, I think, sometimes instructive to see just how devastating some of these side effects can be from the conditioning regimens that we're using to treat different types of cancers. Particularly for a stem cell transplant, these patients receive very myelotoxic therapy to induct them prior to the transplant. As a result, they can develop very, very severe mouth ulcerations as well as uh, ulcerations throughout their GI tract. It's virtually impossible for them to eat, and it's, it's, it's a very, very major disease. So this has been a product that I think has helped a lot of patients. The majority of patients who get severe conditioning regimens will get oral mucositis. And we also see this sometimes as well in some of the solid tumor treatments as well. So we're starting to see some increased use for Kepavance there. This was also, I think somebody mentioned uh, one of the previous speakers that he came from Amgen, so he may remember this product from his Amgen days as well. In terms of our late stage products, uh, we have two very, very interesting products that we're working on, which are long acting factor eights and factor nines. And these children actually have to take drugs pretty much two, three times a week to prevent severe bleeds. I spent several years of my life working in hemophilia, and it is a very, very devastating disease, not only for the children, but as well as the families who are quite involved in the treatment from the time the child is a year and a half, two years old. So these products are quite interesting. Uh, we also have a product that en enhances lipid absorption in premature infants in our development pipeline. And we're also looking at submitting an application in CAPS for Kinneret. So all these products are in, into the phase three area, and um, we're very much hoping for them to be approved in the, near, in the near future. So let me turn now to a little bit about what we're doing in North America. And this has been an interesting challenge. I was actually the first employee hired by Sobe to work in the North American space. They actually had purchased two products from Amgen, but had no organization to market and sell and to manage the products in the United States or Canada. So what have we done to support these products in this geography, which as you know is quite large? So we now have a US proprietary team in the United States that consists of sales, medical, marketing, logistics management, as well as a special, specialty distributor. And this has been working extremely well. And I'll show you some of the pieces of this organization because I think that um, clearly the big companies have an enormous advantage when it comes to the back office, all the operational piece, the manufacturing, distribution, and all the logistics pieces. But what we found is that we can recreate this. And we've been very successful at recreating it on a much smaller scale and being quite successful in delivering product to the patient on time in a very successful way. And in Canada right now, we only have a distributor, but we're actually looking to increase some of our support in Canada in the next couple of years. We actually uh, do cover the United States. We have six sales territories where we have personnel right now, and these territories were essentially designed based on the locations of the bone marrow transplant centers. So we took a look at you know, how many centers there are, how many patients there are who are receiving stem cell transplants, and we divided up the country in a way that we felt uh, would be manageable for sales representatives to get to each of these centers. These are demanding jobs, there's no question. And I think that is one of the challenges that we see is that when you are supporting a product um, for a rare disease for fewer numbers of patients, you're gonna put a lot of demands on your sales force. So you've gotta pick the right people. You've gotta make sure those folks are very, very comfortable and very passionate about what they're doing. We just actually relaunched Kinneret at the beginning of this year, so we're now covering a very large number also of the rheumatologists throughout this geography as well. In terms of our distribution, 
Uh, you know, when I first started, I spent, I must have spent like six hours with the guy who had put together the whole distribution system for the organization. And we did this from scratch. There was zero distribution in the United States. And over a three or four month period, what uh, at, at the time it was actually BioVitrum, had hired an organization to say, okay, how do we do this? We're taking on the US, we have no experience, we need to make sure that these products reach these patients. And oh, by the way, both these products are cold chain products. So they have to be shipped, manufactured, shipped, and delivered cold. So just to add a little another wrinkle on it, it's not just delivering some pills. So we do actually have a supply chain that works all the way from the provision of drug substance through the shipment all the way to our customers. And as I mentioned, it's working extremely well. Uh, we really have our finger on this every single day. We manage this on a daily basis. We've had, I think somebody mentioned earlier, we've had huge weather issues this year. And that can, I mean, something as simple as a snowstorm can really trip you up when you're trying to deliver a patient that is getting a stem cell transplant and they need their cabavans the next day. But again, I think we've supported this in a very, very good way. In addition to this, we have a number of other partners. Um, and frankly, initially it's daunting when you're taking on different partners because you really have to understand what makes the most sense and who is going to be able to support a smaller organization because a lot of the companies are very good when they're trying to support big companies. They've got a lot of business. There's a lot to bill on, quite, I mean, just to be honest. But we need people who are passionate about what we're doing and to make sure they're treating our patients who are calling up about getting reimbursement just the way they would if they're calling from a large company. And I think we've developed a lot of successful partners over the, the past two years. So I think what we also have and what we're being able to utilize extremely well is our parent company in Sweden. With the merger of the two companies, we really have a very strong vertically integrated company, everything from R&D, as I mentioned earlier, business development. We have all the major corporate functions. So although the company is not large, and would be considered a smaller company, we have a tremendous amount of support in Sweden as well. So if we need a contract, if we need something um, looked at from a financial point of view, they're, they're definitely go-to people. It's a small group, but they're all, I think, very dedicated and very experienced folks as well. So all of this, I wanted to just give you a sense of what we're doing to support the products that we're selling because we're very, very dedicated to our mission of providing medicines <coughs> for patients with rare diseases. Thank you very much.